Hi, my name is Teham Saud, and in today's video, we will be going over everything you need to know when it comes to studying for the DAT. I'll be going over an in-depth breakdown of my own schedule for when I was preparing for it. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the end of the video, where I will be giving away a really important resource to one lucky winner, and it's definitely going to help you a lot when you're applying to schools. So without further ado, welcome to One Mission DMD. So I decided to divide this video up into two parts so it doesn't get too long for each video. So this video is going to be strictly about general chemistry, organic chemistry, and quantitative reasoning. This video over here is going to speak about everything you need to know regarding the reading comprehension, PAT, and biology sections. Now when it comes to studying for the DAT, everyone's schedule is different, as it should be, because everyone's studying habits and ways of going about things is totally different. So at this point in the game, you took a lot of undergrad classes and you know how much time you need to put in as a student to get the grades that you want. So because of that, that's the reason why everyone's DAT schedule should be different as well. So I've actually heard of people studying as little as four weeks and then up to an entire semester long worth of studying. Myself, I knew that I would need extra time to study for it, so I actually took three months. And the way that I went about it was that I divided each month for a specific step in the process. So I made three steps when it comes to studying for the DAT. The first phase is preliminary exposure. The second phase is implementing everything you learn from that exposure via practice problems. And the third phase is practice exams. So in step one, which is the preliminary exposure phase, the resource that I recommend everyone to use is Course Saver. Course Saver is a website where you pay for the membership for I think it was like a three month membership or something like that. And this get this grants you access to three really important subjects, which comes to organic chemistry, general chemistry, and the quantitative reasoning section. Course Saver is a really good resource because it allows you to remember everything that you may have forgotten when it comes to undergrad. So if it's been a while since you took Gen Chem or Organic Chemistry or even like Algebra or Geometry type courses, this is a perfect resource to refresh your memory about it. They're very short videos, but they're really detailed to the point where they cover everything to the extent the DAT wants you to know. And because this resource is really good, you want to make sure to take really good notes. You want to take such good notes to the point where you never have to refer to the videos again. Because if you forgot a formula or if you forgot a concept, and you have to pay again to get that information, then you're kind of wasting money. You definitely want to use everything you have to the maximum potential and take really good notes. So I would recommend actually getting a separate notebook for each subject. So get one for Gen Chem, Orgo, and the Quantitative Reasoning section. By doing that, you'll be able to have quick access to any information that you would need. If you're in step two or step three, where you're working on problems and you're forgetting something, you always have that resource to refer to. So definitely make sure to take really good notes that entire month in step one. The reason why Course Saver is so good is because in undergrad, we were taught of different ways to solve problems. Oh, there's this long way. Oh, there's this short way. Oh, there's this somewhat not short long way. But with Course Saver, Chad is telling you how to do it the fastest way possible. And the one section that that's the most helpful for is quantitative reasoning. With the math section, I wouldn't say it's difficult, but when it comes to the amount of questions that you have to solve and the amount of time you have, you definitely want to be making sure you're doing it the fastest way. And there's no other resource out there that I've come across where they teach you how to do everything the fastest way possible. So please make sure to take notes on the way they recommend to tackle the problems. Okay, so that one month is over and you finished all of your notes and you compiled everything in a very organized way. That takes you on to step two. This is the implementation phase. So everything that you've learned through the videos that you took notes on, you can now apply. And the best resource that I would recommend anyone to use at this point would be the DAT Destroyer. Now, most people say that the DAT Destroyer is overkill and I'll agree, it is overkill. But the problem with, when, the problem with students when it comes to using this resource is they look at it superficially and they say, oh, okay, this is too hard. The DAT questions aren't gonna be like this. Yeah, you're right, but the way you maximize the usage of this resource is if you actually do the questions and you look at the answer choices, you'll notice that each answer choice has to do something with a different concept. So if you know the concepts well, it'll allow you to pick the right answer all the time. So another important thing to do 
is take notes. Take notes on a lot of the concepts that they're going to be teaching you through the process of the questions. Make sure to be taking a lot of notes, writing why you got things wrong, writing why you got things right. In fact, actually, when I was studying for the DAT, I was looking over my DAT destroyer notes, which was like two days before my DAT. And I noticed that there was a manipulated equation in there for Gen Chem. And I promise you that exact style question showed up on my DAT. And if I didn't know that manipulated equation, I wouldn't have gotten that question right. I know that for sure. So please use that resource to the maximum potential that it's supposed to be. Don't just look at the questions and be like, oh, these are too hard. They are hard, but make sure you're learning along the way. Also, another thing is that some people end up deciding to take the DAT destroyer questions in timed conditions, and that kind of adds on to the stress. Don't do that. Don't worry about the time. Don't take it in timed conditions. I promise you, if you focus on the amount of questions that you have for that day and you keep going by it, and then by the time the second month is over, you'll feel pretty confident when it comes to going into the practice test. The way this works is that you got to see how many days total you have for studying. So in my case, since I had three months, I had 90 days. So the 30 days I divided for the first phase, which is preliminary exposure. 30 more days I divided into the implementation, so I'm at 60. And then 30 more, I got to 90 days, which was specifically for practice exams. So I divided everything up in terms of what subjects that I needed to do within the first part of 30 days, and I just divided it up. So if you want to take a look at my schedule that I'm putting in the description, you'll see how I did that. And when it comes to step two, you kind of do the same thing. You have to add up all the amount of organic chemistry, general chemistry, and quantitative reasoning questions and divide it up by how many days you have. So I've actually already done that with the edition that I had of DAT Destroyer. If you didn't make changes, if you have a newer edition, go ahead and do that. Okay, so you just finished the 60th day of your step two process in studying, and that brings you to step three. Now, before I start talking about the resources and everything I used with step three, I just wanna preface something. Please do not use any of these resources that I'm about to go over until you've finished everything from step one and step two. Hey, no, stop, just calm down, don't do it. The most common mistake of people that I see posting on DAT Bootcamp's Facebook page or people that ask me is that they say they watched everything from step one. They took notes and stuff from everything on Course Saver and they just go into DAT Bootcamp. The reason I don't recommend that is because you haven't been exposed to the style of questions and how the DAT will present questions to you. If you're going to start using DAT Bootcamp already or DAT QVault or anything like that, you're sabotaging the resource for yourself because you'll end up memorizing all of the answers. So when it comes to two, three weeks before your test and you're still scoring like really bad, then you're going to be so stressed because you just exhausted the resource and you sabotaged your chances of doing well. So please do not use any of these resources until you've had a really good amount of practice through DAT Destroyer or anything like that. Okay, so you finished one, two, now we're at three. When it comes to the practice test, I recommend five resources. I recommend Top Score, DAT Q Vault, DAT Bootcamp, and the 2007 and 2009 ADEA released sample DAT tests. So just like before in step one and step three, we saw how many days we had and we divided them up accordingly. So again, that information is in the description where I kind of divided up everything that I needed to do. The more resources you utilize before you get to bootcamp, the better, because we all know DAT bootcamp is the most representative tool that anyone can use when it comes to studying for the DAT. So definitely keep it last because if you've done a good amount of practice problems and practice exams leading up to DAT Bootcamp, your results and grades that you get on Bootcamp will realistically reflect what you will actually get on your real DAT. Also, after you finish those three online exam resources of Bootcamp, DAT QVault, and Top Score, this is when I would recommend you to start taking the 2007 and 2009 released DAT exams. Now, the 2007 one has been 
agreed upon being the more easier one, but the 2009 one was actually the same grade that I got on my real DAT. So definitely leave that to about the second or third week before your exam. Be sure not to take it too late because if you take it like two, three days before your test and if you somehow don't do well, it's really gonna stress you out and you're gonna be confused in terms of what you need to do. So definitely keep that as a resource you use in the second or third week of your preparation in step three. Now, when it comes to moving your test date, a lot of people do it. I did it myself. I didn't feel like I was ready. So moving it even like two weeks helped me a lot because if it was something that I knew in Gen Chem or Organic Chem or even Quantitative Reasoning that I wasn't understanding a concept or figuring out a way to solve it, then I would refer back to my notes and make sure to put extra time into those things that I needed. So there's nothing wrong with extending your test date. If you feel like you're going to do a lot better by even a week or two weeks, then please do it. So that concludes the video for today and make sure to watch the other video in which I complete the DAT series talking about the other three sections of the DAT. I also promised you guys a giveaway at the end of the video and the giveaway is for the ADEA Official Guide to Dental School. So the way you can win this book is if you're subscribed to my channel, you like this video and you comment which year you are applying to dental school, you're automatically entered. So I'll be picking the winner in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Good luck studying guys. I know it can be really tough, especially with the quarantine times that we're going through right now. Just make sure you use your time because you have more time now than ever. Anyways guys, see you in the next video. Peace.